last video, we explored Manitou Springs, Colorado, and we did a lot of really cool stuff, but there's one thing that we were really excited for that we didn't have time for, so we're gonna do that today. We're at the Cliff Dwellings Museum in Manitou Springs, and this is a really cool place. It's already getting pretty crowded, so we're gonna head up, but we're really excited to explore it because neither of us even knew it was here. I feel like we're really good at getting to places at unfortunate timing. There was a huge tour bus right in front of us in line. I think it was the second tour bus to pull in. It's only been about, well, I guess only, that's kind of a long time. It's been about an hour and a half since this place opened and it is packed. We're here on a Thursday and it is packed. I don't want to see this place on the weekends. But this place is so cool. We learned a little bit about the history already just by reading the brochures that they gave us. And this originated in Southwest Colorado where there's other cliff dwellings, but it was brought stone by stone to be here in central Colorado in the early 1900s, which is just so crazy to think about. We haven't actually gone in any of them yet, but I'm super excited to get inside and see how detailed they are. And just, this is, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently this first room is where like four to six families lived, which is insane. This is really tiny. Apparently though, they, they just like, we were listening to the audio guide, but it was too fast, so we stopped. But one of the things they just dropped on us was that like the people apparently were only four to five feet tall. So maybe that would have helped in fitting four, pe four families in this small area. But still, that's really cramped and apparently they just didn't spend much time inside. Makes sense. It's really weird being in a place where I'm almost too tall for this passageways. Well, apparently you're taller than they would have been. No, I don't see one. It kind of looks like a big storage room for weeds or something. Yeah, jeez. I wonder what all the logs are for. I thought just structure. Yeah, but I don't probably. know. This place is so open, they really just let you walk around everywhere, it seems. And the reason for that is because when they moved everything up here from Southwest Colorado, they rebuilt it with more sturdy materials instead of with the mud and stuff like that that it was originally built with. So we're able to explore it without being concerned about damaging it, which is so cool because it's just so awesome to be able to see these from the outside, but also be in touring, stuff like this. It's so cool, so cool. Where'd it go? That's like, uh, That's like balcony. We found a plaque for the room we were just in, and it says that all these pieces of wood coming out, the big pieces of wood, once had a balcony on them, and that's how people had entry to the third floor, I think. And so they'd have a ladder going up to those. That's really small for upper rooms. Look how small that is in between the wood and the, the top of the rock. That's crazy. It's so small. There's also some pretty cool remnants of things that just like show how they lived their normal everyday lives. Like these pegs right above me, they use them to hang meat and vegetables and things to dry them out. So there's still a lot of indications of how they lived their lives, which is really cool to see. While walking through the cave dwellings, we eventually made our way into what was once a sacred kiva. This area was used as a ceremonial chamber. There's a hole behind the fire pit that is said to have been a spiritual passageway during birth and death. This is a really complex room to have been made with primitive tools and walking through it felt really cool considering how old it was. Yeah. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> 
<laughs> Seems like there would have been an easier way to get in there. Yeah, but I want to see if I can fit. Oh my god. Cool. Okay, I'll go. I'll go back out this way. You don't want to try to go in there? It's the balconies we were talking about. Oh. You like this small ladder? Yeah. <laughs> this is so small. This is like a little unsettling because the ground sounds hollow. I'm a little nervous. I know it's not, but I'm a little nervous. It's just kind of came, came under me. I think this will be a fairly short video, but we were here for even longer than we expected because there is so much to do here. Just walking in all of the um, dwellings and everything just gives you a really cool sense of how they lived. We both had high expectations for this place, but I really thought we were only gonna be able to be here for maybe 20 minutes. I did not realize how much you could walk through everything. It was so awesome. And even though it was really crowded, it wasn't like, it wasn't too bad and it cleared out pretty quick. Um, yeah, but this was a super enjoyable day. We really hope that you enjoyed watching it as well. But that's gonna be it for this video and we hope to see you in the next one.